Hi, Amy with AJ's Vintage Designs and Fashion Toppings here. Gonna show you step by step in this video how to flip a piece of furniture, the basics of painting. I'm gonna be showing you how to fix broken veneer. I'm gonna be showing you how to prime a piece and when to prime a piece and how to get best results when you have hinges. I'm also gonna be showing you how to stain a top. There we go. Okay, I'll be covering it all, so keep on watching. I started this piece and I'm going to be walking you through step by step the steps I go through to um, prep a piece and to paint a piece and totally do the transformation. So I have it already set up in stages for you so you can see each stage. I want to start off with, okay, look at this piece. It's a custom I'm doing for somebody and this piece is very sentimental to them. It's a 1966 Drexel credenza and um, it has this factory finish on it, this green slick factory finish. So I'm going to be showing you the stages. First of all, on this side, I have damage to the veneer. I'm going to show you how I use the mud and just fill the damage on, on veneer. Then this, this page, uh, this section right here, everything's already been cleaned. This, I'm going to show you how um, I, to use slick stick and how to tint your slick stick and how to apply it so you don't get the gummy mess on all of your hinges. We'll be doing that. So we'll go to the slick stick stage. Then I've already prepped this with tinted slick stick, so this is already ready to go. I'm going to apply my first coat of paint, which I'll, tonight I'll be using in the Navy. So we're going to get our first coat of paint on here. So let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, I'm going to walk you through every phase of what I would be doing to flip this piece. Here we go. As you can see, look at this damage that I've got here. I'm going to be using Dixie Belt Mud, and I'm using it in the color brown. Um, but you can see that there's missing veneer. Now, I'm not just going to go ahead and just mud over that. First thing I'm going to want to do is I am going to check and see if it's lifted anywhere. If, if there's loose veneer, you want to make sure you pull any loose veneer off, right, right there. If it's loose, it's going to continue to be loose. So I'm pulling off any loose pieces. Okay, all that's pretty secure. So you're just gonna take your, your finger or something and you're going to um, loosen up or remove any loosened veneer. So I have this big chunk from here to here that's missing. So I'm gonna be filling it with Dixie Bell's mud. That's Dixie Bell's uh, filler. We use this for filling hardware, hardware holes. We use this for texture on pieces sometimes. We use this for our 3D stencils. It's, it's great for fixing the veneer. When you get your mud, you're gonna to want to, this is a brand new container that I just opened because I was running too low to, to, to be able to, to do this project. So when you open it, it looks like Nutella, you know, or chocolate, whipped chocolate. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to stir it up the minute you get it. Get around all those edges and just stir it up, see? And then after I get done, now that it's been opened, once you open it, you want to store it in the refrigerator to keep it fresh. And so then I'm using a little plastic spatula. This is how easy it is to fix missing veneers. As long as you have anything that's loose, knock it off, pull it off. If it's a big chunk and you don't want to remove it, you can like take your popsicle stick. Another thing I'll do is I'll take a popsicle stick and I'll put wood glue, a bench of wood glue on the end of the popsicle stick. And I'd pull the veneer up and I would swipe the glue underneath and then I would press it back down, and if I'm able to use a clamp, I would clamp it. You need to have weight on it or a clamp to hold so, until that glue dries. So you can glue the veneer back on if it's a large section that has come loose, but this is a small section, I wasn't worried about it, so I'm just gonna fill it with wood filler, which is Dixie Belle's mud. Now, if you're one that's not gonna use mud very often and you're gonna put it in the fridge, you're gonna want to make it last longer, you're gonna wanna take it out like once every week or two weeks and just give it a good stir. Get everything off the edges, stir it up real good, put the lid back on and put it back in the refrigerator. It will last a lot longer. Okay, so now I'm just taking my spatula and I'll bring you guys in close, but I'm just wiping my mud. I am gonna bring you guys in close for you now. Okay, I have you a pie because I'm also gonna be doing some gel stain if I have time. Okay, so you can see, I'm just taking the spatula and I'm wiping it over that whole area that's missing the veneer. You want to overfill. And the reason I say that is because it will shrink a little bit. So you want to overfill so I'm slightly higher than my, my missing veneer. I have a ledge that's going along here. So just go a little bit higher than actual the fill needs to be. Just, you know, be generous. Okay, this, this amount of uh, mud will take until tomorrow or late tonight to actually dry. 
and I have a deeper spot right there, so here we go. You don't have to be nice and neat, just make sure that you have it all filled and overfill it. So now, this is going to dry, and like I said, I'll come back tomorrow, and I will take my um, uh, like 180 or 220 grit sandpaper, and I'm gonna sand this smooth. Uh, a sanding block, a sanding sponge. I'm gonna sand this smooth and make sure it's even with my, uh, my furniture piece. I'm gonna sand it, and it'll turn nice and soft and smooth. You're just gonna sand it, sand in circles, sand it back and forth, whatever you want, um, just so that you can't see the difference between the level, between my missing veneer and my piece of furniture. You're gonna sand it so it's nice and smooth. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is, after this is dried, I've sanded it, I've wiped off all my sanding dust. Um, you can use a damp cloth and just gently, not you don't wanna rub your mud with water, but you can take a slightly damp cloth, and just remove that sanding dust. Um, and then I like to seal my mud with a coat of satin. And the reason I like to do that, and you don't have to, okay? You don't have to, but I prefer to do that. Um, I like to sand it back and then I like to put a coat of satin on it. And the reason I like to do that is the mud is kind of porous. And um, so, and my factory finish is not porous at all. So I wanna have an even playing field is what I always say. So by sealing off that porous mud after it's dried, after it's sanded and dried, I seal off that porous mud with the satin to protect it. And then I have an even playing field. So when I put paint over it, my paint is going to stop at the same level as my furniture as it does over the mud. That, that satin clear coat is going to seal that off. That way I don't have a porous area. So like I said, use the mud to fix your veneers, to, to, to fill your hardware hole, uh, deep gouges or scratches. You'll use the mud. You'll let it dry. It has to be completely dry. If you sand it too soon, then you're, it'll like pull it out. So you wanna make sure you give it time to dry. So I usually say leave it until overnight and then come back the next day and do your sanding. Sand it, remove the dust, seal it with a little coat of satin. You're not sealing the whole piece. Just put a little, take a craft brush and just put a little coat of satin just right where you had the mud. Let that dry, boom, start painting over it. So that is how I fix any damages. And that's the only damage I have on this piece right now. Okay, stage two of flipping this piece. We're gonna move right here. Okay, look at that color. Now, this is, I am doing this, uh, it's a custom piece, it's very important to, the, uh, to my clients. It's like I said, it, they, uh, they got it from a family member that's been in the family since 1966. So um, this has a very like shiny, plasticky coat, coating over it, this green coating. And so with that, I just want to assure that this is going to, no matter how often they move and this has been packed up, maybe their kids want to inherit it. This factory finish, I just want to make sure that my paint is going to last a long, long time over this shiny plastic, plastic uh, kind of coating. I don't know how to be nice about this coating. Um, it's not attractive at all. But this is a 1966 Drexel uh, credenza. So, I mean, it's a, it's a beautifully built piece. So I'm gonna be putting Slick Stick on it. Slick Stick is Dixie Belle's bonding primer. It's gonna turn any slippery surface into a paintable surface. You're not gonna be able to scratch this off. So I'm gonna be using Slick Stick. It is on your screen backwards because my phones flip it, so it is backwards. I'm using Slick Stick. However, look at that's gray. Slick Stick's white. I'm gonna be painting with In the Navy. And In the Navy is a very dark blue. Very dark blue, that's the color. I don't really want to have white underneath my dark blue. So I'm gonna tint it, um, tint my slick stick, and I'm gonna show you how to give this a gray, which is a much easier color to, um, to cover. So let's pull this back just a tiny bit for you. And slick stick goes a long way too. So I'm gonna be showing you how to apply it, and uh, I need to get this little hardware off here real quick. Gotta make sure your hardware's off. My son, Joey, cleaned this whole piece before I got started. And he cleaned it with white lightning, um, scrubbed it really good, and then rinsed off all the white lightning with water before we get started. I always put my screws and my uh, handles in the door that they belong in, so I don't lose them. Okay, there we go. Okay, so with Slick Stick, we're gonna tint it. I'm gonna pull you down real quick so you can see how much I'm gonna be doing. Okay, so I just take my little plate. You can take a bowl, turn the slide off so you have the exact rep representation. 
I keep my slick sticks in these little flip top bottles um, because the fact slick stick is so tough um, that a lot of the time <laughs> I will never get this open. I'll, I'll have to slap it on the ground because I'm not good about cleaning my containers and I wipe my brush on the lids a lot so I can't get this open. So I keep mine in just plastic condiment bottles or you can use FIFO bottles. Okay, and so I'm gonna put out some slick stick. As you can see in the light, not very much. And then even though I'm painting with blue, I can, uh, the, in the navy, I can tint this with the navy blue, but I personally like to use caviar, the black, to make it a gray. If I add white to the navy blue, it's gonna turn it to a baby blue slick stick. I just like working with gray for some reason. So it's just a preference, but I always tint my slick stick gray. Now you don't want to over tint your slick stick. Your slick stick, it's formulated to do a specific job. You don't want to change the formulation too much. So I am just going to tint this to a medium to light gray. So see how little I'm putting on my popsicle stick? Very little, that's all I'm gonna tint with. See? Okay, so now I've uh, got my, my caviar in my slick stick. And what I'm basically tinting this to is gonna be equivalent to um, driftwood, maybe a little bit darker, closer to manatee gray. But I'm tinting my slick stick to be a gray. And gray is such a nice neutral color. You'll see a lot of um, uh, you know, stuff that painted red is always primed with a gray first. Gray is just, for some reason, there's a science behind it. It's one of the easiest colors to cover. So that way also when I'm painting with my in the navy, if someone would scratch the piece, it's not gonna be as noticeable with the gray underneath as it would be a bright white. So I tint my slick stick to make it a light gray. Okay, so now when applying slick stick, I'm gonna be applying it on this piece. You apply your slick stick and then you're gonna wait. You can do your one to two coats, but you're gonna wait until the next day. You give it 24 hours before you paint on it. You want your slick stick to bond and have a chance to dry and bond to your substrate of your furniture um, and, and allow it to get that good grip before you paint over it. So I personally will paint with my slick stick um, and I will wait two hours or so in between coats if I wanna do two coats in one day. Then I'll wait till the next day before I actually paint over it. Um, slick stick is, you can use on glass, formica, plastic, metal. That's what it's primarily meant for, but this piece, feels like plastic because it's got that plastic coating, uh, that kind of plasticky coating on it. And you can tell when you touch a piece of furniture, if you close your eyes and you sit there and picture, this doesn't feel like wood, this feels like plastic, then you slick, I, I slick stick it, you know. But if you feel it and you can feel wood grain underneath the factory finish, then I just give it a scuff sand and, and paint away. Um, but no, slick stick is a bonding primer. It does not block bleed throughs. It is not block stains, okay? It's not a blocker, it's an, a bonding primer. Okay, so I put very little on my brush and I never start where I have hinges or I have hardware holes. I never start there because that's where you're gonna gum up all that product. I'm going to, I'm not on my hinges, I'm going to get most of that slick stick off my brush. I'm just gonna work around in areas, get that slick stick off my brush and when I start running out of slick stick on my brush, that's when I'm gonna go to my hinges. I'm, it's almost like dry brushing it on your hinges. So I have barely any left of my brush. I'm just gonna dry brush that slick stick on my hinges. And the reason I'm doing that is if, you, if I would have dipped my paint in my slick stick and gone straight to those hinges, that excess paint from your slick stick is going to sit in all those cracks of, ugh, of your hinges. When your hinges move, all that excess paint is gonna stick in there. And what happens is when it dries, it peels, it, and, and it peels off because it's clumped up in between the joints and then when you move it, it's, it's trying to work it off. So I never start on a hinge. I will wear my paint off, get as much off my paint as possible. I'm gonna go all over my piece and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna hit my hinges. I have barely any on my brush left. So now I'm gonna just barely hit my hinges. It's almost like dry brushing. That's gonna keep any excess slick stick from seeping in between all those joints on your hinges. So do those last when your brush is almost dry. Okay, I do thin coats of slick stick. And keep in mind, when it comes to slick stick, don't just slap it on and think that you're gonna cover 
any brush strokes when you're painting your next coats. Your every coat you do is only as good as the coat that's underneath it. So if you do just slap on your slick stick, then your next coat is going to reveal the strokes that you put on your, you know, with the slick stick. You want to be just as nice and neat with your slick stick, nice and smooth as you would if you're painting your piece. Um, so pay attention to drips, pay attention to um, how you're applying it, making sure it's nice and smooth. And, you, and, and I apply mine thin. I apply mine thin because I always know I can put on a second coat. I usually like to do two coats of slick stick when I need it. So I'm gonna get in all these, these areas. And I like to use a synthetic brush with my slick stick. I don't like to use a chip brush because once again, I don't want to leave brush strokes. And I know what someone's gonna ask right now. Can you sand your slick stick? Of course you can sand your slick stick. So let's say I painted this and um, I noticed that I left a lot of brush strokes and I don't want to paint my next coat over all those brush strokes. So you can come back, you know, after 24 hours, let it go for 24 hours and let it, uh, let it dry. Then you can come back and I'll take, you know, a high grit sandpaper or my favorite is actually, I just used it around the corner, didn't I? My Dixie Belle sanding sponge. I think I, I just used it a second ago. The Dixie Bell sanding sponge is my preferred way, but you can sand it between coats of your slick stick. Just don't break through that protective barrier. Um, but you can sand it if you, uh, if you happen, you know, in between coats, if you happen to have brush strokes. Because like I said, each coat that you do is gonna be as good as the coat that's underneath it. Make sure you get it all, underneath all your ledges. And want to make sure we have enough time for everything. So I'm just going to get this door real quick. I also like to slick stick the, I'll be doing the inside of this door and I will be doing, um, because I'm painting the inside of this door, the doors too. So I'll be doing those, but I'm not going to do that on the live. How do you clean the brush you use the slick stick? Okay, with slick stick. Since we're going to catch it before it dries, um, you know, it hardens and that's why we give it 24 hours before we paint over it because it's getting a time to dry. Your paintbrush is fine. I use a, I have a couple synthetic brushes that I set aside that are just for boss and slick stick. Um, but I do not put them in a bag between coats. I don't put them in the refrigerator, my personal opinion. Um, but I will, the minute I get done using this, um, it will go in a bucket with water and then, and I'll keep painting, but I'll have it setting in a, a bucket of water and that will get most of the paint out of it. Then I'll take it to the sink and I will clean it with um, warm, not hot water, warm water and my scrubby soap, the sponge that's in the scrubby soap. I will clean it and rinse it. Um, I personally do uh, try to get all the paint out of, or most of the paint out of it, whether it's wiping a paper towel or throwing it in the bucket before I take it to the sink because the slick stick is strong. It sticks to anything. And that's what's so fabulous about it. So just think about that. If you dump a bunch of slick stick down your drain, <laughs> it's gonna stick to your pipes. Um, so I personally, I'll either, if I don't have a bucket of water out here with me, I will wipe off as much slick stick as I can on a paper towel, um, and then I take it to the sink and wash it. But like I said, I do not store my slick stick or my paintbrush in between coats. It goes immediately to the sink to be washed after I got the, the, the paint out of it. I do not wrap it in a paper towel with a little bit of water and wait for my next coat. Um, that is very hard on your brush. Okay, so I'm doing thin coats. Also with the hardware holes, I never start right after I dip, I would never start right over hardware hole. You're, you're gonna come back in like 10 minutes and see, oops, I gotta run. It's gonna accumulate in there and then it could run out and then you have a run that you have to deal with. So I am gonna, I just dipped. So I'm gonna go as far as I can around my piece and when I start getting most of the paint off my brush, then I'm gonna come back and go over my hardware holes. You can mist your brush. You can mist your brush a little bit and that will help with your drag marks. If you happen to be getting drag marks, mist your brush just slightly and, um, and you can do it that way. And that will give you a very smooth finish as well because some climates, if they're really dry, the paint's gonna to wanna to dry on you as quick as you know, you're painting if, if, you know, if you're a slower painter like me. Um, so you can mist your brush. I personally do not mist my piece with water while I'm doing slick stick because I want the slick stick to be touching my furniture piece 
I don't want to have that water in between the two and I'm blending them out. I just, to me, I mean, it just, it's a peace of mind for me. I prefer not to, to mist my piece. I will mist my brush when using Slick Stick. If I feel that it's drying too quick on me and I'm not moving quick enough. You have a lot of work time, but understand that some areas, um, your humidity is fighting against you. It makes stuff dry a lot quicker. Um, I know if you're, if you're in Arizona, I mean, you got all that heat. You might find if you're not working in a climate control um, area that your stuff is drying on you quickly and it's kind of like fighting with you. So see how nicely this is going on. You can see how nice and smooth the slick stick is. Um, I'm gonna move on to the next step. Let me just clean off my brush real quick so I'm not wasting paint. I will spray my brush with water until this live is over with, and then I will take my brush and, and get it all cleaned out. I will not let it set. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step. And if we have time, we're even gonna get, look at the top of this piece. I did sand back the veneer, and look at the gorgeous wood that was underneath, but this is a very thin veneer on top of here. So I'm not going to be sanding this because there's all these little ridges. I'm afraid that I will accidentally burn through that veneer when I'm sanding because this was very temperamental. Um, so I'm gonna be painting this lip the navy blue and this is gonna be the walnut. So the next stage is, I got my slick stick on, it's been sitting for 24 hours. Now I'm gonna do my base color. And like I said, my base color is in the navy. This is the FIFO bottle that people were asking about. I always check to make sure I don't have that little carrot. I put my finger over it and I shake. I never shake without putting my finger over it because you can only imagine what could happen if you accidentally squeezed. Okay, so in the navy, won't take much paint. Look at how pretty that color is. So I'm using my Dixie Belle Mini again. That's my preferred paintbrush. I mean, I use it basically when people ask me, which brush are you using? Nine times out of 10, it's the Dixie Belle Mini. Okay, so now, same thing as with the slick stick. I am going to not start on my holes and not start on my hardware. Well, granted, I'd have to do it on the other side because I, I didn't slick stick this. But I don't start on my hardware and I don't start on the holes. I'm gonna put my paint, I'm gonna offload my paint in another area and then I can come back and get my, the hole here when I have very little paint on my brush. That way I'm not gonna take a risk of me not paying attention and then I have paint dripping out of my, the hardware holes because I had so much accumulated on my brush. So I never start on hardware and I never start on um, hinges. The hinges and the, uh, the hardware holes are always when I have very little on my brush left over. Okay, I'll do short choppy strokes. Uh, short choppy strokes, and that is to get that paint down in all these details. But I won't leave it that way, unless I want texture, because by doing those little short choppy strokes, I'm adding texture. But I don't want texture, so I'm just getting it in all those grooves, and then I always come back and smooth, smooth it out. Now, once again, just like with Slick Stick, if you happen to have um, your piece is, is, you're getting the drag marks or it's feeling like it's dragging a little bit because your temperatures, you can either, I already have Slick Stick on here, so I'm already good. Everything's gonna bond wonderful. I can either mist my brush or I can mist my piece and add a little water to my piece because I have that primer now, now, so I'm not worried about it. So you can mist your brush. What missing your brush does, and if you're asking, this is water in here. It's just a missing, with, missing brush with water. Adding that water with the chalk, this is the chalk mineral-based paint that I'm using. Um, when adding it with water, it kind of thins the paint out and allows it to go so much farther. If you miss with a little bit of water, you will use so much less paint on a project. One, it saves you money. And two, um, not only does it save you money, but it gives you a smoother finish. Now, Dixie Belle paints are self-leveling, but when we say self-leveling, it's not like resin where you can just pour it all over and it's gonna flatten itself out. It's self-leveling to a, a, a certain extent, which what that means is as it dries and you have, every finger is like a brush mark. Every, every finger is a, br a bristle mark. So when you apply your paint, you might have bristle marks or your, your brush marks, but the self-leveling as it dries, it just flattens itself out and gets rid of those. That's what it means by self-leveling. So adding that water just helps with that self-leveling and smoothing out your paint, letting it go farther. If I would not use any water, I think I would use um, a at least a third more paint on a project than if I did use water. So, you know, 
I'm here to save you some money. <laughs> use a little water and you'll use a lot less paint. Like I said, you can mist your piece or you can mist your brush. So we're gonna get this coat of In the Navy on. Now with dark colors like this, I already know, I'm trying to chop and get into all those little corners, I'm stabbing it and then I'm gonna smooth it out. I already know using this dark color, I'm gonna need two coats for sure. Um, because I'm putting my coat on, my paint on thin because I want it nice and smooth. I don't want any thick brush marks or any runs. So I'm putting this first coat on nice and thin. I'm getting great coverage, but it's not completely the coverage, I mean the full coverage that I'm looking for. So I will be doing two coats. Um, I have a general rule, but it's, I mean, it's not everybody's rule, but I have a general rule. I only add, I only do two steps per day. Um, so if I add two coats of paint on a piece, then I'm not gonna add anything more to it till the next day. That's just my general rule. So if I did two coats of paint, I'd wait till the next day to come back and do anything else. If I did two coats of slick stick, I'm gonna wait till the next day, I'm not gonna add anything else. I want to give everything its proper dry time. And the more products you pile on top of a product, a project without giving it proper dry time, the more chance that you're taking a risk that one of those steps, you know, could not be completely dry, and then you're making corrections. I would rather give proper dry time from the beginning than have to correct any issues afterwards. If you're trying something new for the first time, get a, get a practice board. I do recommend, especially if you have a vision in your head and you're like, I really want it to look like this. Um, get a sample board. They're, they're so economical. Just have uh, a piece of Luan board or a thin piece of plywood or backer board cut from Home Depot. Have them cut into eight by 10 sheets. They do that for you. And then um, practice and play. Some of my favorite looks that I've ever done have been accidents. <laughs> Uh, playing around and uh, happy accidents, they say, but playing around is, and experimenting with the, with the products, you're going to learn. And you know what? And if you make a mistake, every mistake is a learning opportunity. So I do recommend, you know, get the paint, get some practice boards. If you don't have that perfect piece of furniture yet, but you really want to be painting and learn how to paint, get practice boards, practice your blending, um, practice using glazes. Uh, take some classes. So you don't have to have furniture around to be able to use Dixie Bell paint. Okay, with the no paint gel stain, that's as high as I can get you, so you'll be able to at least see it close up. The no paint gel stain, there you go. Um, she wants walnut. You need to make sure that you are wearing uh, a set of gloves, because this is oil-based. It won't come off your hands. I haven't opened this for some time now, so hopefully... I had my lid on good before. Yeah, it's good. You have to stir it between uses. So let me put my gloves on real quick. Okay, let me get this all stirred up. You want to always stir your products up. Um, even if they look like they're stirred up, you stir them up again anyway um, because you want all the ingredients that are formulated to make the product work as well as it does. You want to be getting all those ingredients equally distributed throughout the product for best results. Okay, so I personally, for applying my no pain, no pain gel stain, I like to use the Dixie Bell applicator pads. Um, and I keep this the bag that it comes in. I keep these bags because when I do my first coat of no pain gel stain, I'm gonna throw it back into an empty bag. I'm gonna put it back in the bag and it will stay fresh until tomorrow when I do my next coat. You want to wait 24 hours between coats of no pain gel stain and then uh, a minimum of 24 hours. And then since it's oil based, I like to seal it with either gator hide or our clear coat and satin or flat, whatever sheen you want. Um, I use our water based clear coats. You wait three to five days, depending on your humidity and your climate in your area. You wait three to five days before you seal it. I'm in Georgia. I wait five days personally. Okay. So we stirred it up. Now you're gonna see how easy it is to apply it. Okay. And I just dip it on the end of my applicator pad. Okay, just getting it on the end of my applicator pad. Make sure I have no dust. And I'm going to wipe it on. And the nice thing about these pads is it's kind of like as I'm applying it, I'm also wiping it back at the same time. 
and I'm gonna get a nice rich color. See, I'm going back and forth. I'm applying it and wiping it back at the same time. I fully sanded this, started with a 60 grit, went up to um, 80, then uh, 120, and finished with a 220. Uh, but I was very gentle because it's a very thin veneer. I did not want to blow through the veneer and ruin the veneer. So I was very gentle. That's why it took me so long to do it. Okay, so you're going to be able to see how gorgeous this transforms. Okay, long, even strokes. If you apply it too thick and you're not liking how dark it, or you're, you think it's too dark or too thick, you can take a rag with, I learned this from Brandy, you can take a rag with mineral spirits and you can thin it out. So like right now, if this was too dark or too deep, um, or I didn't like how my wood was grabbing it, you can take uh, mineral spirits on a sponge, and since this is oil-based, and it will thin it out. So you can wipe a lot of it back and remove a lot of it just by using the mineral spirits. So if you apply it and you don't like it, or you feel you need to lighten it, add some mineral spirits to it because I have a few, piece, few areas here that are taking it differently. I, I think you can see that one spot. I'm not worried about that. I'm gonna catch it on the second coat. Okay. See how that, the wood has the trim in it. That trim is gorgeous. I'm gonna go get with the grain with the trim. Okay, let me move you down just one more bit. I can't stop. Once I start this, you have to finish because you'll have stop and start marks. If not, okay, and I didn't move you far enough. Okay, so now I keep going. And you'll see how quickly I can get this all done. So you can see I'm rubbing it into those grains, spread it out. I'm going with the grain, because right there the grain changes directions. And since I'm using the applicator pad, like I said, it's like I'm applying it and wiping it off at the same time rubbing it into that grain. This is oil-based. You do not want to use hemp oil. You do not want to use Big Mama's butter on no pain gel stain. Oil reactivates oil. So if I would turn around, even if I let this set for four days and I would decide to put a hemp oil on it, I would actually reactivate this and it'll move it. Okay, boom. Ooh, that's gonna look so pretty. Let me hold it up so you can see it. Okay, see how that top's gonna look? It needs one more coat to even it out. I will let it set for 24 hours before I put the second coat on there. So there you go. Okay, there you have it. From staining the top to painting the body, all the prep and everything you need to do to flip a piece of furniture, quick and easy. Especially doing a simple finish like this, these kind of sell like hotcakes. So hopefully you've learned something from this video. Thanks for joining me, I really appreciate it. Make sure you click on the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it. That way you get notified each and every time I put a video up. Um, but I love how she turned out. She is a beauty and she is going home to her new owner tomorrow. Isn't that she gorgeous? Started off that really ugly green. Sorry, but I didn't like the green and now she's a beautiful navy blue. Okay, thanks for watching. Love and hugs. Until next time, I hope you have a great day.